his name. These are the faces of America and our community. Black, brown, and white. Their voices raw and in pain. Demanding change, calling for justice, hoping this time will be the last time that they will have to take a stand and that police will treat black people with humanity and dignity. Over recent weeks, your organizations have been quite vocal um, with protests, demonstrations. Some see this as a direct movement over a single issue, the death of George Floyd. Is that it or is it something larger than just a single incident? Well, one, I would say the single incident is, is, was, the, was the clarion call for us to remain uh, at the issues that already exist, not to let up. Because sometimes I think we can get a sense of false peace where things seem quiet, we don't have incidences, that, but that doesn't mean that we don't have things going on that we're not aware of. And we have a lot of things in our own city that most of the public are not aware of. And so, but George Floyd's death was that clarion call for the nation to stand up against what we've already been fighting against all along. Brother Muhammad, talk about some of those disparities that blacks face. Well, you know, um, that the fact that uh, in 2014, we had the death of Sandra Bland, uh, Mike Brown, and Trayvon Martin. They always come in multiples before we start to do something. And, and, and this time with Breonna Taylor, uh, our brother Ahmaud Aubrey, and George Floyd, uh, that produced an effect. And what's, what it brings about, it, it, it brings about a change now that we don't uh, necessarily depend on our local leadership as we've uh, done before. So right now we're planning, we're planning some uh, uh, non-traditional approaches to the uh, um, the problems that we've all all faced, and hopefully everybody will be hearing about that, you know, in in the near future. Zaki, in recent days, we've heard the word systemic racism. Mm -hmm. What is that? Because the word racism can be jarring to some who don't believe racism is mm -hmm. still an issue. And what does this look like in 2020? Um, in my opinion, system system systemic racism, it's like basically even it was racism in your workplace where you go to school at. It's racism within like how things are set up and with the world because Somebody like me wouldn't have the same opportunities as somebody that was a uh, Caucasian, you know, so I feel like that is basically what it means with systemic racism. Mm -hmm. Pastor Adam, what does that look like? Well, you know, it looks like, because um, a lot of things we put underneath the banner of poverty and we, 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 we subscribe poverty as that person's issue or inability to come to rise above self challenges. But then when you look into our legal system, you see that black men are more likely to go to prison for, less, for lesser crimes than, than, than white men. Uh, you look in our healthcare system, uh, black babies have the less chance of being born with adequate health care and, and, and all those things. And then when you look into our school systems, you say, well, why our educational system has a lesser disparities than, 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 than our white counterparts? And so when you look at a broad spectrum of, of disparities, a lot of times we hide those disparities under the banner of poverty, which then will cause someone to think that poverty is the issue, when in actuality, we still have an issue with systemic racism at, the, at, at, at a lot of levels, even within some organizations. And so when we look at our police department, does our police department actually adequately reflect our community? So if our community is 13% or 19% African-American, do we have 19% African-American on the police force? And so do we have 19% on the uh, fire department? Do we have 19% uh, African-Americans in any workplace at any given time anywhere outside of the service industry? Protesting has been etched into our national soul. There have been no less than 25 major insurrections since the founding of the United States in 1776. 
Native Americans, immigrant Americans, slaves, and free men alike have protested and rebelled over things like stamps, tea, corn, whiskey, and coal. Today, it continues with the pursuit of equality, civil rights, and the ability to live without fear. Brother Muhammad, how is this movement, the current movement, different than protests and movements in the past? And is the message the same? I think that the difference now is that we recognize that the, uh, the institution of white supremacy and how it's, uh, how it's so subversive in each institution, uh, health, uh, financial, education, uh, media, law enforcement, and we're willing to call it out. And also we're willing to uh, produce policies that will force these systems to recognize the problem of white supremacy and the effects of white supremacy on people of color and then demand and force that change. And, and that's the difference between the youth of today rather than some of the adults my age of yesterday we will go along to get along. We will take everything based on face value. But the young people today, they're able to push back with information. They're able to do their research and then uh, challenge us on the policies that we said, I mean, that the ruling uh, party says that they were gonna do in the first place. That's the difference and the youth aren't gonna let up. Uh, they're not going home. This is here to stay in there. There will be change. Zakia, let's talk about that. We're seeing these protests, these mass gatherings. Why use that as a way to get your voice heard? I feel like we're empowered when we're together. So, and for, for our protests, we really like to have everybody's voice be heard because a lot of people, I know my age, we have a lot of angry, like, like we have a lot of anger, like built up aggression and stuff like that. So I feel like if we can like, uh, hone that in and make effective change about it, then it'd be really good. So having mass gatherings, bringing all of our people together, I feel like it's the best way. That's how my ancestors did it and we're gonna be able to do it even you know, greater. Pastor Allen, we've heard the chant, Black Lives Matter. We've seen it on posters. You have critics who say, I can't get on board with this because all lives matter. Yes. Are they missing a point here? I believe so. They're missing a point in to say that one, uh, one, they would try to use the Black Lives Matter maybe organization and some of the things that's underneath their bullet points and what they exist for as a reason not to get involved, especially from the faith community. But when you realize if you just erase, not let's not talk about the organization, but let's just talk about the statement and that if 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 all lives matter, then it shouldn't matter that we will make a statement that Black Lives Matter. What's the answer for change here? We've heard police reform, defunding police. What's the answer? <clears throat> um, all of the above. All of the above. And, and there's a big move to either abolish the police department, disband the police department, defund the police department. All of those terms are extreme. However, people are dying. And we can no longer have um, a passive uh, uh, solutions for extreme policies and we're looking to defund the uh, Toledo Police Department. We want to take those funds that are listed for law enforcement only to be shifted to more uh, paramedic, paramedical uh, departments that understand what a non-emergency call is, that understand what de-escalation means, to understand to use some social service skills, some counseling skills on, on calls that would normally be um, um, designed or just for those who would show up with a gun, a taser, handcuffs, and a billy club. See, those things are going to have to change, and we're looking to shift the funding of how police and law enforcement in Toledo is funded and make sure that those uh, uh, funds are diverted to those professionals like EMTs with those uh, uh, certifications that they can de-escalate if there's a call for uh, mental health, that they can de-escalate if it's a domestic uh, call, just as what we had in uh, Oregon. Imagine if someone with the skill to de-escalate rather than um, those showing up 
with bullets only. So we're looking to, uh, to make this happen. Uh, and, and I believe that we're gonna make it happen right here in Toledo. That's one of the policies of, of a few that we're looking to implement in our city. Zaki and Pastor yeah. Allen, is, how long will this go on for? And do we see change? Is it imminent? I think change is in the very near future, but you're gonna see it uh, as the old reference to what about Bob, you know, story, right? Baby steps. You're gonna see start to see small things change. And I think we have to start, like if we look at it as a building, we have to create building blocks. What's our broad thing that we can do now? Then what can we add to it and what can we add to it? The issue is, is to not let up just off of one win. Because one win is not the championship. And so if we take a long-term approach, a long-range approach and see something down the road, but to say to uh, the thing is that if we look at Obama's 21st century police uh, uh, policing, you know, if you look at our force, our force, we talk about defunding or diverting funds, our force is not even at the, at the adequate amount of officers that we need on the force right now. And so what I would say is, is that, yes, we need to, as we need trauma care and all these things, but how do we equip the community to come alongside of as well? Because it's, it, it's easy to point the finger at the police department over a few bad apples, but then how do we, as community, come alongside of those things and say, hey, these are things that we can provide if the police does X, Y, and Z, we will do this. And so our approach is partnership. And that's where we've been approaching our police department and our mayor. How do we partner together to bring the resources alongside of what our city officials need now? Mr. Kier, what would you say to those who say that this isn't my problem, so I'm gonna sit this one out? Um, like people of color, just anybody. Anybody. <laughs> so for somebody to say for the all lives matter thing, so for somebody to say that it isn't their problem and they call their self, oh, everybody matters, then how is it not your problem? We're people, you know, I, God, I believe in God and God made all things on earth. And so if he made white and black people and Hispanic people in all these different shades, then why is it not a problem? If you believe in God and you pray to him every single night, then my life should matter as much as your life matters. When you're praying for yourself, you're praying for everybody that you care about. So for somebody that feels like they, they shouldn't be involved and it doesn't matter to them, then they, they can't stay in the same breath that all life matters to them because it doesn't.